to shave or not to shave. I'm pretty sure that's what Hamlet said or like something like that anyways. <laughs> Actually, we've probably said that to ourselves while standing in front of the bathroom mirror holding a razor in our hands, wondering if we really do want to continue with the process. The long, annoying process that is shaving. Or well, body hair removal in general, which is what I'm gonna be talking about today. Hey guys, it's Sharon. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my personal experience with laser hair removal and an IPL, which is an at-home hair removal device. So these are the more permanent ways of getting rid of your body hair. So if you hate shaving, tweezing, threading, waxing, sugaring, this is gonna be great for you. <laughs> if you wanna see more videos like this, I recommend checking out my video, Why You Hate Your Body, and giving this a thumbs up, and also subscribing and turning on your post notifications. Now before I dive into my personal experience with laser hair removal, I actually wanna give you like a brief run-through of the history of body Body hair removal because it's actually been around a lot longer than I thought. Body hair removal traces as far back as the prehistoric era in 30,000 BC. Cavemen used flint razors to shave their faces and cave women created the first hair removal creams made of like really dangerous substances like quicklime and arsenic though so it caused a lot of skin damage. Ancient Egyptian women removed all their body hair by scrubbing with pumice stones, tweezing with seashells, threading using beeswax and early sugaring methods. Early Romans viewed a lack of body hair as a symbol of high class. In the early Middle Ages, women removed all body, face, and head hair. Bald heads allowed them to wear wigs or headpieces, which was very fashionable at the time. Middle Eastern women have long practiced sugaring to remove body hair. Hairless skin was thought to be clean and pure. In 1915, Gillette introduced the first women's razor in the U.S. And of course, ads went crazy encouraging women to shave. In the 1960s, wax strips became popular, and waxing grew popular in the 80s. And of course, the 90s and the 2000s gave us laser hair removal. Now back Back then, I thought hair removal was done for like convenience or even surviving. Like maybe your hair was preventing you or holding you back from doing something that put your life at risk. I don't know, man. Apparently not though. For thousands of years, being hairless just meant you were a clean, pure woman of high status. Since I was little, the media has shoved this unrealistic idea of the perfect girl down my throat, and I'm sure it's probably done the same for you. This perfect girl is super thin, she's extremely beautiful, she has amazing skin and not a single hair on that amazing skin or that perfectly sculpted body. These are the girls we saw in magazines, on TV, on red carpets, in ads. They were all we saw. By 2013, more than 90% of women ages 16 to 24 were shaving their underarms and their legs. Now, while it was tough growing up in the 2000s, there were a few celebrities and brands that were actually pretty notable and leaning more towards a more natural look. The first one that comes to mind is 2015 Miley Cyrus. What an icon. By 2016, there was actually a decrease in women that shaved their underarms and their legs. We start seeing more female celebrities showing their underarm hair and more ads showing body hair in general. I also think COVID shifted us more towards a natural look. We had nowhere to go and we just eventually stopped caring. But it's not really about whether you should or should not shave. It's about whether you want to or not. Body hair is a personal preference. You should be doing it for yourself, not because you think you have to. Now, my personal experience with body hair has been a trip to say the least. Let's start with my family history. I am Cuban American and I come from a family with long, dark, thick hair, which honestly is a blessing and a curse, but I didn't think it was a curse when I was younger. This is gonna be a little bit TMI, but like I will never forget showing my mom my first underarm hair and my first pube and my mom absolutely freaking out and being so ecstatic for me. This meant that I was becoming a woman. I was going through puberty. That excitement quickly ended when I started middle school, much like most happiness in life. <laughs> It was around the first or second week of sixth grade. I was at a new school. I barely knew anyone there. This kid that sat in front of me decided one day to turn around in his seat, look down at my arm on the desk and say, you have really hairy arms for a girl. I think he was jealous because I have more arm hair than him, but like, I digress. Looking back now, it shouldn't have bothered me as much as it did, but like, it really bothered me. I was a kid for crying out loud. I was 11. I was going through puberty. I was insecure about literally everything and anything. So after that, I begged my mom to start letting me shave and I began shaving my legs and my arms. And pfft, my arms were nothing compared to my legs. I shaved religiously all throughout middle school. Anytime I saw arm hair coming back, I would shave and I would have to shave every other day for PE. When I got to high school, freshman year brought on this pressure that I had never faced before. And it wasn't even because of school. It was because I was 14 going on 15. 
and Hispanic culture, I was on the brink of becoming a woman. That's right, the lovely quinceañera. This is essentially like a sweet 16 or a bar mitzvah. It's a coming of age celebration for a woman that's very popular in Hispanic slash Latino cultures. Now when I was 14, I was a lot bigger than I am now. I think I was a size 16 at my largest. I was a very big and hairy girl. You can just imagine how insecure I felt towards my body. I did what I thought was right at the time and what I thought would really like smush my insecurities. I started dieting and I asked my parents to gift me full body laser hair removal for my 15th birthday. I did not want to see a single hair anywhere. Hair was only to be on my head, on my eyebrows, and on my eyelashes. Nowhere else. I guess nose hair, but still. I had been bullied for my arm hair. I had been bullied for my unibrow, my super bushy eyebrows that my mom didn't let me do until I was like 16. I was bullied for my super hairy legs. I was over it. Shaving was annoying and I didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. So I wanted zapped off of me and for good. And to be honest, looking back at it now, I don't regret it. I do wish it was under better circumstances and better reasons, but I don't at all regret getting laser hair removal. Before I get into the nitty gritty details about laser hair removal in my experience, let's first talk about the different types of hair removal. So the first one is depilation. This is removing hair at the skin's surface and it includes shaving and hair removal creams. Next we have epilation. This is the removal of hair below the skin. So this is waxing and sugaring, a mechanical epilator, tweezing and threading. The last one is photoepilation. So this targets the hair follicle, just preventing hair from growing. Now before turning to laser, I've tried shaving, I've tried hair removal creams, I've tried tweezing and threading. I've yet to try waxing. It terrifies me. So that's the only one I haven't tried. <laughs> Maybe I'll turn that into a video, me trying waxing for the first time, but not yet. <laughs> now when it came to laser, I tried two different methods or I guess two different machines. When I was 14 going on 15, the first method slash machine I tried was very painful. Sometimes I would leave crying or with burns and that's not supposed to be normal. The woman who would laser me was literally such a hard ass and would not care and would tell me to suck it up. Literally suck it up as she's like burning me and I'm bawling my eyes out at times. <laughs> it felt like a rubber band on fire constantly and consistently snapping at your skin. It was very dry and it was very hot, but it was effective. So I guess what they say is true. Beauty is pain. The company I chose decided to like split up my body parts to make it easier for me. Eventually I did kind of build a tolerance and it wasn't as painful, but there were some parts of my body that no matter how many times I got them done was still just as painful as the first time. And those areas included my underarms, my vagina and my bikini line. I'm talking like imagine a knife on fire going deep into your skin over and over again. Not even the rubber band we've upgraded or downgraded depending how you want to describe it to fire knife. My upper lip was pretty painful too but honestly since the area is really small it wasn't that bad. So TMI again but I do have more hair down there and under my arms than I do on the rest of my body because these were the parts I got done least. And honestly I'm kind of okay with that. My biggest concerns were always my arms and my legs and during the summer my lower back and my happy trail on my tummy. <laughs> Shout out to those Latina jeans. Now something happened with the company that I first started going to that kind of got lost in translation and I still don't completely understand. Like I said, they were meant to be doing my full body every time, but it was getting all so mixed up and just so disorganized. And again, I was leaving in tears and the occasional burn that I just stopped doing laser for a while until I found another company actually owned by my friend's mom. So I started laser again when I was about 17, 16, maybe 18. I'm 24 now and honestly, it's done a pretty solid job. The way a laser hair removal appointment works is you shave the day before and you come to the appointment completely clean. No makeup, no lotions, no sunscreen, no perfume, nada. Your skin is bare. Also for a warning, you can wear makeup, but if you're getting your face done, you shouldn't wear makeup. Now, depending what you get done determines how long you take. My full body, including my face, would take on average about an hour. I think the quickest I got it done was 45 minutes. Face was definitely done the quickest and you'll be asked to wear goggles or sunglasses to protect your eyes from the laser. Bigger body parts obviously took longer and those sensitive areas. Now since I was doing my full body, yes, I was butt naked on this table. I had to become very comfortable with my body very quickly. And at the beginning, I always had the same woman lasering me, so it really wasn't that bad. And that same woman being my best friend's mom, so her and I got very close very quickly. <laughs> but after some time, she started hiring more employees, so like every now and then I would come in and it would be a different woman lasering my body instead. I think in total, I was lasered by three different women. From just 
just this company. In theory, it sounds mortifying getting naked and laying on a table for a random stranger to laser my body, but it really helped to remember that this was their job. My coochie was not the first nor last coochie they would see. After your appointment, you should avoid sun exposure for several days slash weeks. This also includes avoiding fake tans. This actually goes for like before your appointment too. Laser is more successful if you have lighter skin but with darker hair. The laser works best when there's a greater contrast between the hair and the skin since the hair is what absorbs the light from the laser against your background skin color. But that's not to say if you're darker you can't do laser. It just might take a little more time. It'll typically take four to six sessions, again depending on your skin and hair. I was estimated eight to ten sessions. Each session is several weeks apart and I think I did mine every six to eight weeks or so. In between sessions, if or when you still get hair, you'll notice that it's a lot lighter and a lot thinner and it even may grow a bit more sparse. Now the second machine I used was so much better. It didn't feel as dry nor hot and it was actually cooling because she would add a cooling gel on the areas she was lasering. It was still a little bit painful but it was truly nothing compared to that first super dry machine. <laughs> also at this point my pain tolerance had like really built up. I also haven't really explained how laser works so let's do that now. The laser emits a light that is absorbed by the pigment or melanin in the hair. This light energy is converted into heat which then damages the hair follicles in your skin. This damage prevents or delays hair growth and it is completely safe. Like I said I'm 24 now and hair removal has evolved a lot since. Now there's a thing called IPL which stands for intense pulsed light. I actually have an example of one. This is the Diamond Air Plus by Ulite who is actually the sponsor of today's video. Let's do a little unboxing so you can see everything this IPL kit comes with. First off super cute and fancy packaging. We gotta appreciate it. Of course we have the instruction manual which you should definitely read if you're gonna be lasering some hair off. I didn't know there was a power button until I checked the manual so don't be like me. Read it. There's a small compartment where you'll find a razor. Like I said you'll want to shave before laser or using an IPL. I think it's super awesome that this kit came with a razor. I wasn't expecting it but it was a nice convenient surprise. In the little green case there's a pair of sunglasses. Like I also mentioned you need to wear glasses to protect your eyes from the laser. Now in the big box you'll find the IPL itself. It's colors are so chic. I love it. It also feels like a good size. It's not too small or too obnoxious. Under the IPL is half of the cord you need. It's other half being under this little green flap. Before I show you what it's like using an IPL, let's talk about the difference between an IPL and laser hair removal. The main difference is the type of light. IPL is a broadband pulse light source, whereas laser is a monochromatic coherent light source. Both methods target the melanin in the hair follicles and have permanent results. The laser can be more precise than IPL and is suitable for more skin tones. But since it's a high power output, laser treatments should be done at a clinic or a salon. With Ulife's IPL, you can do two to three treatments a week. With laser, I'd have weeks between sessions. And if you're wondering, yes, doing it at home by yourself is completely safe. Ulike has over 30 international safety certifications and they're a top seller. Setup is super easy. You literally just plug it into the wall and into the device itself. This is the part where before you do anything else, you put on the sunglasses. The power button is on the side and it also works as an intensity mode. You would go up depending on your tolerance. Arguably, I could have started at two or three, but since I haven't done a hair removal treatment like this in a hot minute, I started at the lowest intensity level, just like a beginner should. Now to actually use it, you press the tip firmly against your skin. The light won't pulse unless you do. You can press this button once to zap a specific area or hold it down and glide it against your skin. I prefer to glide for bigger areas like my arms or my legs and press it on small areas like my underarms, or in my case, areas that also don't have as much hair as they used to and in random spots. It's easy, quick, and surprisingly pain-free, which is easily the biggest pro in my opinion, especially after dealing with what felt like a rubber band on fire, completely and utterly torturing me. <laughs> the other pros worth mentioning are pretty obvious, but like the fact that I can do it in the comfort of my own home, on my own time, and at my own pace is pretty awesome. I don't have to make an appointment or wait on someone else, nor do I have to lay naked on a table for anyone else but me. <laughs> the IPL is also easy to clean and I can double check my work. Like if I miss a spot, I can simply zap it. I don't have to go home after a session and notice that someone else missed a spot and I paid for them to miss a spot. This one pro could be considered a con as well and that's the cost. It's a hefty price at first, but it is cheaper in the long run. I mean, think about it. You won't have to spend money on razors or waxes for the rest of your hairy life. <laughs> the one con I can really think of is that it may not be as precise as laser and the treatments are more often, but you can see results in like two to four weeks.
weeks and again you're doing it at your own discretion so honestly like that one con is pretty overshadowed by convenience I guess you can say now of course I use my IPL to remove the body hair my treatments missed the hairs I'm really bothered by nowadays are my little chin hairs they're the worst I hate them so this bad boy right here is gonna make sure they leave me alone my armpits too just because I kind of do feel silly having like six strands of underarm hair this is essentially what I had left after laser so this is a before and here's my after using you likes IPL and of course I do leg and arm touch-ups my leg hairs are a lot harder to see but I do have some left around my knees and randomly on my shins the IPL is great for these tiny spots my arm hair isn't as full as it first was but it also isn't as hairless as my legs I've noticed my hairs are very thin and lighter on my arms which honestly makes using the IPL even easier for me again just touch-ups for me really all in all my experience with using you likes IPL is pretty positive I'm pleasantly surprised I'm impressed and I'm excited to use it more honestly I'm just grateful I won't be getting burned or tortured anymore <laughs> if you'd like to try you likes IPL you know I got you with that discount sis you can enjoy $70 off your purchase via the Amazon link in my description and in my pinned comment. Prime Day is coming up, so if you buy it between October 11th and October 12th of 2022, you can enjoy not only the $70 off, but an additional $20 off with my code, meaning you'd save $90 if you purchase after October 13th. Again, you'd just be saving the $70, which is still a pretty solid deal. So go get your zap on. And remember, like I said, at the end of the day, it's your own personal preference and what you want to do with your own body and your body hair. Don't let others' comments or bodies influence you. It's okay to have body hair. It's okay to not have body hair. The point is that you get to choose. If you wanna remove your body hair, think about the best options for you. You can shave, wax, thread, sugar, laser, IPL. Personally, I wish I had known about IPL sooner or before I started my laser journey because it feels and sounds like the best option of all to me it's long lasting you can do it in the comfort of your own home it's also faster it saves time you're not having to go somewhere else and rely on someone else I could do this at 3 a.m. if I wanted to yes it is a bit more expensive but it's not as expensive as my laser was and it's an investment that's worth it it beats getting a wax every three months or buying razors every other month heck it beats shaving every other week if you're considering IPL think about you like this is the diamond air plus and it really is a game changer. That being said, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out in any way, shape, or form, please give this a thumbs up. I hope I answered some of your permanent hair removal questions. If you have any more, comment them down and I will try my best to answer and help in the best way that I can. Shout out of the day goes to Mags on Instagram at thank you so, so much. If you would like to be shout out of the day, just follow me on my Instagram and stay active. Also follow me on my Twitter and my TikTok for bonus content and chances to be in my videos. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and turn on those post notifications. And all that being said, I will see you guys next time. Bye.